booked your, you know, your ticket. And it, it just speeds up. No ticket machines, no educating people how to use them. Just wave your credit card, your cell phone, which is your credit card, and it gets charged. Okay, next slide, please. I have a similar story, which I'll do very quickly, in a province in the Netherlands. I want to tell you about this one because if you click, please, a little map will come up. It's this long, narrow province, um, so it's not as dense as Nice. And we have cities that match this configuration in the U.S. where they're more spread out. Here they had, um, if you'd go to the next slide, please, they had <clears throat> a train. Didn't have our name on it till we started running it four years ago, but this, this regional train. And it was competing with uh, 230 buses and 15 private taxi companies. They hired us to integrate their system, to put it all together so that it would be seamless. They told us we had one mission, make travel easy. So that was our mission. So we um, did pretty much, if you go to the next slide, please, the same things that we did in Nice. You guys could probably write the script now. We, um, um, sorry, I can't see the slides, so I don't know which order my bullets are in, but we essentially it put all the buses so they fed the train. We, when there's not a bus near you, the taxi ride is part of your fare. It's just included in the cost of your ticket. And then we, if you can just go through all these bullets, we did all the, basically the same other things. The control center is very interesting. All the dispatchers for taxi, rail, and bus, and some circulators they have too, are all in one room. Soon they're going to be using one set of software. So every day those guys are fine-tuning, fine-tuning, making the mobility happen, fixing breakdowns, moving stops. We literally configured the vast majority of the stops so that it would be easy to go from the bus up to the train platform, moved stairways, made curbs get out of the way. You know, just thinking about, if you were there, about you. How fast is it going to be for you to make this transfer from the bus up to the train? That's what it takes to make seamlessness happen in transportation. That's what goes on behind the scenes. And in Limburg, the results are surprisingly similar to, um, to France. 36% um, increase in the rail ridership. Not, they bought four new buses. That's it, out of 240 buses. And bus ridership is up 30%. Just unbelievable. Why? Because it's more convenient. Time is everything to people. Passenger satisfaction also increased. Far less fuel and labor costs and less government subsidy because there's more revenue from ridership. OK, my third example is Salt Lake City. A fantastic story happening there. Are we on Salt Lake City? Sorry, I can't click my own slides. It should be the, the picture with the snow. They have buses there now. They take you right from downtown, right up to the slopes with your skis, and in the summer with your mountain bike, right up to the trails. It started in the year 2000, next slide please, where they launched two miles of a light rail network anticipating the Olympics for 2002. They now have expanded and expanded that light rail network. And next slide please. They have added a commuter rail network, and they now have 64 miles of light rail in Salt Lake City with 70 more miles planned by 2015. It's just remarkable what it's done to change the city. They also introduced something very important. Those of you who care about transit need to know about this. It's called bus rapid transit. It's starting to happen a lot more now in the U.S. where buses move in dedicated lanes and the, no cars can get in there. So the buses keep moving and the buses are, are connected with the traffic signals and the buses are given priority. So as they enter a, you know, an intersection, the light stays green, keeps the buses moving and have made huge differences around the world in, in mobility. The results in Salt Lake City are extremely impressive and continue to grow. 50,000 people a day ride the light rail, more than double their projections. 20% of people who work downtown now ride the light rail or the bus or the BRT into downtown to work, and a quarter of the students at the University of Utah. Okay, so my last piece of slide for you is a drawing of the whole thing. You could probably fill these in now. These are the components it takes to make mobility happen in a large city. And my guess, my concluding remarks to you are that I hope these examples show to you that with political will, vision, good pu public-private sector collaboration, and a passion for passenger convenience, you can transform lives. These cities all have much, much better environmental statistics now, much better quality of life. And um, the last slide here, please is I hope I've shown you that this is doable. I didn't pick cities like Paris and London. I picked you know, cities that are reasonably sized where people got together and made this happen. Um, my, the next bullet, please. 
You can see the huge benefits, and I hope that you guys will advocate for these kinds of mobility and connectivity um, changes in your communities. If you want to know the legislation that would help support this to happen, the ATU's website has a fantastic summary of what needs to happen for this to move forward in our country, and I thanks you, thank you very much for the time uh, you've given me to tell this little story. Thank you.